uswaterrockets.com water rocket construction tutorial how to build the do-it-yourself launch pad altimeter with servo deploy this video demonstrates the simple steps needed to build your own launch pad altimeter and how to add a servo motor for parachute recovery using the apogee detect feature the launch pad altimeter starts out life as an MSP430 launch pad development board. Carefully unpack the board and remove it from the static bag. Now you're ready to begin. There are several versions of the MSP430 launch pad development board and the assembly procedure varies slightly depending on which board you have. Newer boards have rows of pins installed along the edges while older boards have no pins on the edges and instead include the pins in a separate package in the box. Click on the links shown here to skip to the procedure for the version of the board which you will be using. You can also let the video play through and see the procedures for both board types. For the newer style MSP430 launch pad, you need to remove the unused pins from the board. Remove all of the pins except those in positions P1.2 through P2.1. You can remove the pins by either cutting the plastic carrier away and desoldering the unused pins, or you can simply clip off the tops of the unused pins using a pair of wire cutters. The end result is to have the six pins shown here remaining. The procedure for the older style MSP430 launch pad is much simpler. First, remove the connector pins from the package. Separate one of the male and female connector pairs. Trim four pins off the end of one of the male connectors and then solder the pins into positions P1.2 through P2.1. The second step is to install the barometric pressure sensor breakout board to the MSP430 launch pad. Remove the barometric pressure sensor breakout board from the static bag and slide it onto the six pins remaining on the MSP430 launch pad. Make sure that the components are facing upwards and then solder the pins to the pressure sensor board. Now you can trim off the protruding part of the pins. The third step is to install the audio enunciator to the MSP430 launch pad. Remove the enunciator from the static bag and look closely for the position of the positive and negative markings. The positive terminal must connect to the X-out pin and the negative terminal must connect to the GND pin. The spacing of the leads on the enunciator does not exactly match the hole spacing on the MSP430 launch pad. So use a pair of pliers to gently bend the two leads closer together and then insert the leads into the MSP430 launch pad board. Now, solder the leads to the board. The excess lead can then be trimmed off. The launch pad altimeter should look like this at this point. The fourth step is only needed if you have an MSP430 launch pad with a 14-pin processor installed. If you look at the processor chip in the center of the MSP430 launch pad, you will see a device with either 20 pins or a device with 14 pins and 6 empty holes in the socket. Click the link below for the chip which you have installed in your launch pad. If you click the 20 pin link, you will skip ahead to the next step. If you click the 14 pin link, or wait a few seconds, you will proceed to the jumper installation instructions. For the 14 pin device, you will need to add a jumper from the VCC pin to the pin at position P2.0 and a jumper from the bottom of the S2 push button to the pin at position P2.1. Solder the two jumper wires in place as shown.
the end result will look something like this. You can use either a standard 9 volt battery with the launch pad altimeter or a 3.7 volt lithium polymer battery. Each battery type has a specific connector that's required for its use. If you intend to use the servo parachute deploy option, then you must use the 3.7 volt battery. Regardless of which battery connector you choose, the installation steps are the same. Insert the black battery lead into the hole mark TP3 and the red battery lead into the hole mark TP1 on the launch pad. Then solder both leads to the pads and trim off any excess lead. If you're not planning to use the servo deploy option, then your assembly is complete. You can click the link below to skip the servo installation steps and learn how to load the software into your launch pad altimeter. To add a servo parachute deploy system to your launch pad altimeter, you will need a Hobby King HXT900 or similar 3.7 volt compatible servo motor. You can connect the leads from the servo motor directly to the launch pad altimeter or install a servo extension lead in place of the servo and then plug the servo into the extension lead. The process is the same either way. Clip off the female connector from the end of the servo lead and separate the individual wires. Strip off the insulation. Now, solder the orange control wire from the servo to the launch pad altimeter at position P1.7. Solder the servo's red positive power wire to the red battery lead at TP1, and then the brown negative power wire from the servo to the black battery lead at TP3. The servo installation should look like this when complete. Congratulations, you have now completed the assembly of the launch pad altimeter. The only step left is to program the free firmware into the board. Click on one of the links below to choose what you want to do next. You can watch the Launchpad Altimeter firmware loading video. You can see a web page version of this tutorial. You can see a tutorial showing how to build our radial parachute deploy system that is compatible with the Launchpad Altimeter. Or you can subscribe so you don't miss any of our future developments with this project. See you next time.